Nestled among the hills of Donegal, the village of Creesla sits along the rugged beauty of the wild Atlantic Way. A picture postcard setting, it has been the subject of pen and verse through the ages. In an area steeped in its own unique history, its people have made their mark in many ways. And two of its most famous and influential people were daughters of Chrysla. One helped to change the face of Irish entertainment. The other helped to change the world. Well, the program that Kay McNulty was involved in, the, 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 the ENIAC program, was really the very first example of digital innovation. It was the, the first digital computer. So really, it was the pioneering device, which now when we see today, there's probably more computing power. There is certainly more computing power in our iPhones. But this was an absolute milestone breakthrough. And to have a number of women involved was very significant. But I suppose for us, for all of us uh, who are Irish and committed to innovation, to have an Irish woman at the heart of it just was hugely significant. So I think there's great national pride about the, the work that Kay McNulty did. And it's fantastic that in, in recent years, uh, various parts of Ireland are now celebrating Kay McNulty's role in Deal. And I'm delighted that um, that connection with Donegal is actually you know, being highlighted and celebrated. The earliest thing that I can remember is lying on the vestibule floor of my house with my two brothers. We were looking under the door to see if the goat was outside the house. If he was, we weren't going out. This happened in my house in Ireland, where I was born on February 12th, 1921. I was born on the same land where my father's family had lived since 1804. In October 1924, we sailed for the United States. My father met us in New York and took us to our new furnished house in Widmore, where we lived for two years. We spoke only Gaelic in our house in Ireland and the United States. My brothers, however, had started school and learned English. They brought their books home and I learned to read in English, although I probably didn't pronounce the words right. of the girls, I think there were about four of them who had been sent up from Aberdeen, and Dean Pender's secretary, there were no women in the Moore School at all. And the, toward the, the spring of 1945, it became pretty obvious that the war was ending, and uh, I can't remember exactly whether it was Goldst Goldstein, Lieutenant Goldstein, or John Holbert who came to me one day while I was working on my shift and asked if I would be at all interested in working on a new computer that was being constructed upstairs. So uh, with nothing else uh, looming big in my future at that time, I said I thought that'd be interesting to learn how to do that. <laughs> now in the fall of 1945, the ENIAC was already pretty much constructed. As a matter of fact, it was all the panels were up. Uh, some of the parts were not quite uh, finished. I think the uh, multiplier dividers, I mean the divider square rooter was not in operation, but otherwise everything else was. And uh, very sure, uh, then we, ha we, were, we were told we had to learn how to operate this machine. Well, how do you go about that? And they, uh, whoever, uh, 
I guess it was um, somebody from Moore School, I just don't remember just who the person was, uh, gave us a whole stack of blueprints. And these were the wiring diagrams for all the panels. And we, they said, here, you can figure out how the machine works and then figure out how to program it. Well, <laughs> this was uh, a little bit hard to do, knowing nothing about anything. So Dr. Burks at that time was one of the people assigned to explain to us how the various uh, parts of the computer worked, how the how an accumulator worked. Well, once you knew how an accumulator worked, you could pretty well be able to trace the other circuits for yourself and figure this thing out. Dr. Hartree came from England and uh, I was assigned to work with Dr. Hartree. So Dr. Hartree had also had been here once before and had had the operation of the machine explained to him and he had also had uh, evidently some uh, blueprints or some description of the machine before he arrived to put his problem on. So I went over, worked with him and ironed the bugs out of the the setup that he had worked out and together we set up the machine and started to work Dr. Hartree's problem and that went on uh, most of the month of July of 1946 we're talking about now so uh, I had a lot of fun working on that machine just an absolutely wonderful time Tell me what you use computers for. Uh, working. Working. Okay. To do the map. Wait, you can use the to you can go search up a map. Learning stuff. You can go up online and you can uh, look for clothes and everything. To watch things. To watch things. And what do you watch on Things in Netflix. Bigger usage, more on Abraham, like being like bigger pill, pill on August Neil shirt and television. Mm. Uh, August Neil has forgotten score, he left er, er, um, uh, and Reaper. Mm, this place has no Reaper. Mm. Yeah. Computers work by codes and instructions oh. to tell them to do what they're supposed to do. Oh wow, that's that's clever. And how how do you think a code works? Well, you might have to like type in stuff, and it's a, it's a very hard work when you're doing it. It takes a long time. So here at DCU, uh, in recent years, we've been placing a huge emphasis on equality, diversity and, and inclusion. But in particular, uh, the focus has been on gender equality and we created a, a new suite of initiatives called Women in Leadership. And as part of that, there's a, there's an, an, a special emphasis on STEM uh, because of the gender imbalance in, in that suite of disciplines. So one of the initiatives we had was Project 5050, whereby we were renaming buildings or naming new buildings 50% uh, after pioneering women. So the building over here to my left, which is the, the centre of our of computing, the, head, the, the building that where all the students of computing go to in, in DCU, and it's really one of our core strengths. We wanted, in particular, to name that building after pioneering women. And it really didn't take very long for us to make the decision that Kay McNulty was the ideal person. And why was it ideal? Well, she was pioneering, she was a digital innovator, she was the original computer, as, as the people were called. But also, DCU has very strong connections with Donegal. Many, many students every year come from Donegal to DCU and feel at home here. So all of the, these things came together and we contacted her family and we were thrilled at their positivity about it. And in fact, her daughter Jeannie came to visit us and along with the Minister for uh, Higher Education, uh, Mary Mitchell O'Connor, we unveiled the plaque on that building and we raised the sign above it. 
Now students are inspired, now students know who Kay McNulty is and they're proud of her. And I think that's, that for us has been a milestone moment and we're just delighted to be part of the Kay McNulty story. From her humble beginnings, Kay McNulty has left her mark in history. A pioneer of technology, she is also a pioneer of equality and an inspiration for a new generation of scholars seeking to improve the world around us through technological innovation.